Wait, 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 wait. Cease fire. Stop, stop, stop. Stop the video. Cease. We, we got to go into this here. All right. Full disclaimer. I didn't get a whole lot of video from the show. I was really busy. What you got for a real quick preview there was me walking around while dealers were still showing up at about 840 in the morning and they weren't set up yet. Uh, really, really good show. I'm not going to lie up. I wish I could have got more video of it. There, I did a lot of talking with people there. Had a good amount of sales out there. Met some new people and everything. But we're going to talk the good, the bad, even the ugly of the show today. Again, the show was really good. Nothing with this, uh, with against Derby City or nothing like that out there. But there's some key points that I want to talk about from both buyers and sellers there. Their show was great. The people were flowing in there. They had new dealers in there. There was new inventory in there. It was great uh, across the board. I just personally didn't pick up anything to show you guys in this video because nothing caught my eye. But again, I might be really spoiled off of whatnot right now, finding steals and deals, you know, at like 50, 60% off. So when I hear, I'm like, oh, I like that car where I'd have bought it maybe a few months ago. Now I'm like, I'll just pick something, you know, up off whatnot. I can buy two cards for the price of that one there. And, you know, if I go to try to sell them or trade them to somebody else, you know, I got big margins into it to where I can get more out of it. So I maybe spoiled a little bit, maybe spoiled a little bit onto it there. But I didn't pick anything up. I did have some nice sales out there. A lot of stuff was moving. I didn't I don't know personally if any of the higher end stuff moved I saw out there, but I would say a lot of people were selling stuff twenty two uh probably maybe a hundred dollars easily out there. Guys were looking to do, you know, bulk deals, package deals, as normal out there. Uh, nothing really different on to it. You still had a lot of window shoppers coming by. It was good for a first show of the year. Uh, like I said, it for that what the building itself had its pipe bust beginning in January. We had our ice storm out there, so the floors were all being redone. They had a different room. Loved the new room out there. It was bigger, more spacious, and everything. But really, really, really was a good show. Now let's get into more of the bad and the ugly about the sports card shows in general. And I think a lot of people are not really looking at how stuff is changing along the way. We get stuck into how we do things in the past. And trust me, I spent 20 years in the Army. Everybody hated change. It was the one thing you were so used and so proficient in doing it one way. Change sucked. And in the hobby, whether you call this a market or whatever you want to do, change sucks. Whether Now, if it's sort of good, you won't hear people complain. But when it's change, it sucks. They complain about it all the time. We see plenty of videos out there. I mean, look at where I said sports car shows are dying. Everybody else had to, you know, chime in across the board, across the YouTube world on to it. I think the realm of sports card shows, if they're spread out and you have the people, different inventory and stuff across the boards, you can run them more frequently. But it also depends on your time of the year and everything else with it. I will say I don't see... Now, I've heard Dallas was popping from guys that I know that were set up there. I personally wasn't there, but maybe those bigger ones, hey, people are out there, you know, have that extra money now. It's not Christmas and all this other reasons behind it, and they're spending money to buy cards because they believe we've hit the bottom of the of the uh, decline where I still don't think we have. We still have a lot more room to go down. On a lot of different areas. Some areas are safe. Don't get me wrong. Alright. Before I keep going on a tangent here. Let's talk that bad and ugly. Walking around. Talk to some dealers. First thing they'll come out and tell you is that. They're using either eBay. Alt. Card ladder. Market movers. Well not too many people use market movers. Let's just be honest. I never hear anybody use market movers. Um. Center stage was another one that was popular out there. But I'm just going to use those as an example. 
So they're saying the last one sold on eBay at this. Okay, well, that's great for a guideline. And this meant this is where change is coming into play with guys that have been doing this for a long, long time. They know the trends. They've seen this stuff in the 90s, the 2000s, the 2000s, and 10s. And now, again, history repeats itself. eBay is fine. Alt is fine. Anything you use is fine to get a guide or use as a guideline when it's something that's heavily populated that you see all the time out there. And I know a lot of people are probably going to argue with me in a video on this. So we're going to use Zion based rookies. How about that? We'll use or Morant based rookies. You could see those all the time. There's plenty of sales out there, just not on eBay, that you can use and figure out a value for that sports card. I will not argue that at all. What I will argue is two things, basically, maybe three, depending on how I get into this here. The first one is if I have a card that's very limited, and it could be a low pop PSA 10 card, it could be a serial number card out of 99 or less, it don't matter the year out. Well, let's go, you know, pre COVID cards out of 99 because we all know we've hit every parallel by now and every color and freaking skin graph thing between elephant, snake, dragon, whatever out there now. But you have something that's low populated, pre-COVID uh, manufacturer and all that. You go look at sales out there, right? There's four sales. In the last, we'll say, five, six months. If you're only using eBay onto that, you could kind of use it partly. But say it goes three high, one low. The last one's low for some reason. Can't find anywhere else. Well, if you use other tools, maybe like Vintage Price Guide, whatever, you start pulling all the auction house data and everything else, it gives you a little bit more of a wiggle room on it. This is where it gets interesting with the, the dealers, the sellers who have been doing this for a very, very long time. We'll say three, the first three sales are at 1000 the most recent is at $750, $800. They have that one of the card there populated out twenty five. They want twelve hundred for it. Buyer's gonna say low is it just sold last comp seven fifty last comp seven fifty. Okay, it could be bad. It could be came out of a overseas. People don't always bid on stuff from Canada, Thailand, everything else out there. One card was out of Indonesia. They tried get tried telling me that that's the most recent. That's the most recent. And I just laugh because they're trying to get a steal of a deal from you. They know how they're trying to will and deal use car salesman tactics. But those new set, those uh, old. I shouldn't say old because we're all old. Um, those guys have been doing this for a long time frame. They then go look at what's up for sale. Say every other sell out there is eighteen hundred dollars plus. You can't buy this card for $1,200, even though the highest sale in the last six months could have been $1,000. Supply and demand is starting to come back, and a lot of guys are trying to, I don't know if it's reinvent prices and stuff like that, or try to educate people onto this and why they're not doing it. There's a difference between being in over your head on a card and understanding how to price cards. And like I said, this stuff is always going to change the mentality of how it's being done. But from those experienced dealers out there, they understand that, okay, go find one of the other cards out there. You're not going to find it for this that low-end price that's sold from Thailand, Japan, or maybe the guy had bad feedback history. Maybe he misdid his labeling, header headers or whatever. Some guy just put like, 2021 Prism Josh Giddy Auto, where somebody took their time in that listing and explained it better, had more hits onto it. Think about this out there. It, it, it's changing to that right now. I'm telling you, I've seen it now for the last two or three months. I've had in depth talks with guys that have been doing this for many, many decades. 
and they've been looking at this as well, that if you have a card that is low production out there, whether it's graded or it could be low serial numbered out there, and you don't see another one up for sale even in that ballpark figure, you're pretty much going to be where somebody's either going to pay something for it where you're comfortable at, but you don't have to take those low end unless you're sucking and hurting for money, guys. I'm telling you now, there's a different way that pe these dealers are looking at it. Again, if the card is something that has some high pop thing, it's been overproduced, you could use that as a solid guideline. When you start talking about cards that are very limited and are sought after out there, if there's a low comp more recent, there's a reason why it was low. Why didn't you bid on it and get it for that low one? That's my first question. Why don't you bid on it and get it? It sold for $200 under the last three sales in the last six months. You don't see them pop up for uh, auction that much. Why didn't you bid? Oh, I was just watching it. Mm -hmm. You were trying to hope that that thing sold low. Hear me out here. This is true. They were hoping it would sell low. So then they can go somewhere else and be like, well, I'll pay you 80% on to a cash at a, at a dealer table. Get it low. Wait for that next one to come back out at over $1,000 and they make money on it. Telling you, that's what they're doing now. It sounds crazy, but that's what it is. Now, for that experienced dealer, he knows that that one there, there's many of other avenues that are not recorded out there for sales. Facebook sales, card show sales, unless somebody out there is documenting all these YouTube videos and they're able to catch what somebody's paying for something. All these, you know, private one-on-one -on -one sales at trade nights or whatever going on. Instagram. What not is not even being uh, fully transparent whenever you're starting to see what stuff's selling for. Imagine if they force people to properly list it instead of auction one, auction two, auction three. And then that stuff went to one of the places like all the places, card ladder, market movers, and all them other places that do all that bundling, alt and all that. We'd have a lot of different things on it because I could tell you now on whatnot. There's cards on there that sell over frequently of what people get on eBay for. It just happens. But that was one of the biggest things is trying to tell people that whenever you have something that nobody else that show has, I guarantee you if I went to any of the other three or four other local shows in that area, nobody's going to have it. Why would I settle for less on a bad sale? And I know it's a bad sell. Or that dealer knows it's a bad sell. That dealer also knows you can't buy this card on eBay, because that's what everybody likes to use, for anything under this amount. You could go throw all your best offers out that guy. If he accepts them, they ain't going to take them. So, different mentality on some of that stuff out there. Doesn't work for it all. But now we're starting to really... I, I don't want to use nitpick... But they're really diving and digging in to this whole thing now onto it. So one thing I want to talk about, a lot of guys didn't want to hear it. A lot of the younger guys, I'm going to tell you now, a lot of the younger guys didn't want to hear it. And until they get ready for the new way that this stuff's being looked at by the bigger dealers out there, it's just going to hurt. It's going to hurt. Things change, and whatever is that trend, it's going to be that trend. Whether you like bell bottoms or penny loafers or not, it's going to be it, guys. All right, let me hit some of this other stuff out here. Uh, and this is some of the stuff I've seen, just not at my table and other tables, too. Just around me. Etiquette and tact. I'm sorry, younger generation, but it's mostly you guys that went around and did it from, like, ages 15 to 25. If you guys are coming around saying, what's the lowest you'll take on that card? That's insulting a lot of people out there. I'm not going to lie. Whether that other dealer is your same age, is older, whatever it may be, younger, that's insulting what the lowest is. Why can't you come out there and just ask, will you take this onto the card? Have some tact. Have some etiquette out there. Because as soon as some of these dealers, they don't even want to mess with you as soon as you do that. What's the lowest you'll take on this card here? And that's the way they do it. What's the lowest you'll take on this one right here? 
Hmm. Well, last comp was this on to it, even though the last seven or eight before that were high. There's reason why that's low. It wasn't because the guy went out there and committed, you know, some type of felony or is now, you know, broke his leg, can't play. There's a reason behind it. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about. Guys, don't go up to somebody's table and tell them you have a ton of followers on Instagram or whatever. They don't care about your clout. That's embarrassing. Especially when you come up to somebody's table, offer them something low, and be like, well, yeah, I have like 5,000 followers. Or they ask you, well, hey, uh, how many followers do you have on this and that? Don't do that. That's just... That just it just shows immaturity across the board. Clout chasers, clout chasers. Um, because I was actually having a talk with somebody else on that does YouTube. I don't know if he w would want me to put it out or not. Who it was? Well, anyhow, we had a conversation. Somebody came out over there, and it was just one of them awkward conversations with a third person jumping in somebody else's two people's conversations onto it. You know, and I just listened. To what happened there, I but before that, let me tell you, that was not the isolated situation. Before that, there was about four or five people walking around. I could hear behind me, because I'd turn and look. I could see the left of me, the right of me, across from me. Guys were doing that a lot. Well, my 10,000 followers on Instagram, they, they wouldn't pay that for this card. My 100,000 uh, followers on this, or whatever it is, I'm like, wow. Guys, I'm dead serious. This was going on there. I it, I don't know if this goes on at every show, but and it, again, it was nothing. I know it's not all of the younger generation doing it, but that's what I seen doing it. At. Nobody. <laughs> I just was in shock. I was like, wow, we're really stretching, trying to, you know, steal deals from dealers today, aren't we out there? It's one thing if you want to go up and be like how much you want for your whole table. I respect that if you because you're going to get it at a discount. That's what you want to buy a whole table for at a discount. But trying to pick up one, a fifty dollar card, and telling them you only pay uh, thirty dollars for it. Come on, that's crazy. That that wasn't happening to me. I only had maybe two or three like little situations like it, but I heard tons of it going on around me. And as soon as I heard it, I'm like, please don't. I'm just thinking in my head like this, guys. Please don't come to me right now and pull that, because I just don't even have time for that. <laughs> or I'll be like, I... the one guy that did it early to me, I said, no, I'm not budging on the price. It's going to be graded. You sure you won't take this? Didn't I just tell you that? <laughs> oh, man. But overall, guys, don't. I don't want to... Make it seem like I'm using Derby C. It was a bad show. It was a great show. A great show, like I said in the beginning of the video. Lots of sales. Had some trades go on out there. And I wish I still had the trades, but I forgot about it. And I sold them on whatnot the other night just to move the cards. But overall, really good show out there. I just want to talk about some of the bad and ugly I saw out there. The etiquette and tact of a lot of people is getting worse. If you're a dealer, please don't get frustrated by it. Just blow it off and let them keep going around. They're going to tarnish their own reputation locally by doing that. Um, same thing with the new mentality. I just want to make sure everybody understood it completely out there where you're going to see this now. When you're going to shows, certain even live streams are doing it and showing people it too now. Uh if it's something that's common across the board, you could use eBay or whatever as a guideline on to sales. Because we don't have, like we used to you carry around the Beckett, the Tough Stuff, the Sports Card Collector monthly thing and everything else. We don't have that. Everybody's gauging off of what people are doing, you know, selling it for. But we're not seeing the full picture. You're seeing maybe half the picture, we'll say. Between eBay, um, the auction houses, mostly for the high-end stuff. But nobody's incorporated. And a little bit of my slabs is being generated out there, too, in some of these reports. But we're not seeing the big picture out there, trust me. And there's so much more that I've seen in the big picture of stuff selling for more over what you'll see on eBay. And, like I said, long talks with some people onto it. This is the way that a lot of people are doing it. And they're still pushing 
selling, whatever you want to call it, sales at those types of levels out there because you're not going to find those cards anywhere else. And if you do, the bar for buying it now or your bins are already up high. All right, guys. Sorry to get more of a video on to this out there. Like I said, I was really busy out there uh, talking with a lot of people, making new, uh, I don't know if connections is the way you say it, but, you know, just talking to different people out there, seeing how they see different things onto it. A couple of were on tape, but I'm not going to play that because I didn't get any permissions. Most of my cameras run, it's just for deals and stuff, and then I bleep out the background. But really didn't even want to show any of the deals out there because I don't think any of my deals were over 100 bucks to be honest. So there was nothing like really exciting on to it. But the amount of deals was good out there. I'm not going to lie. A lot of amount of sales was good. It was just nothing like really video crazy worthy that I would want to watch, you know, type deal. But other than that, guys, appreciate you watching. Don't forget, League of Our Owns and uh, Mr. Enfuego's podcast this Saturday. I'll post something here on YouTube in the community comments, uh, like little forum piece, just so everybody has it. I can't remember if it's 8 p.m. Eastern my time or 9 p.m. Eastern. I don't have it pulled up, so I do apologize on to that. But other than that, guys, catch y'all next video. Have a good one.